Today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. I want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for the generous donate, donation of all this beautiful black cow cow manure that uh, we use in our video today. And uh, it's made a tremendous success in our garden. I've been using black cow for uh, many years, ever since 1980, and it's always made a tremendous difference in my garden. And I've been very pleased with our product. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Black Gold, for sponsoring our channel. Well, good morning, Homestead family. Miss Nancy says she wants some Roma tomatoes this year so she can make some fine tomato sauce. So we'll be right back after the break. We'll talk about our Romas. See you in a minute. <music> Well, welcome back. Today we're going to grow some uh, Roma tomatoes, and this is called Martino's, Martino's Roma. I got these seeds at Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds online. If uh, you never checked out their website, you, you need to. They got some really good vegetables, and their seeds are very reliable. I highly recommend them. So anyway, let's um, get these seeds in the... Uh, little seed starting cups. We're going to grow these in um, containers this year. So I thought you might want to uh, take a look at this video on container grown Romas because um, a lot of folks don't have a whole lot of room to grow things like that. And um, a container garden is really easy and uh, it doesn't take much room in your yard or your patio. So let's get these into cups. Um, if you've never seen how I uh, plant my seeds. Um, Nancy's got a little seed starting uh, a video on our channel. Go check it out. You know, it's how to start seeds successfully. And I always start my seeds outside because I live in Florida now and it's nice and warm down here and I don't have to have a greenhouse or I don't need to start them inside anymore. So that's a, that's a big uh, blessing. So we're gonna get these into seed starting uh, trays here and we're gonna get them in a seed starting rack and, let them get going. Let's get started. Okay, there's our little Roma tomatoes. I'm just going to stick these in here with all my other tomato plants that I got already in the seed starting rack. So I'll stick them in there. There you go. Y'all happier like that? <laughs> there to go. We got them in the rack. We'll watch them grow all the way out to harvest. So I look forward to the day I can make me some uh, nice plate of spaghetti that Nancy makes out of these beautiful Roma tomatoes. We'll see you back here in a couple weeks. Well, happy new day, friends. Well, today's April the 3rd, and we planted these on March the 1st, and so it's been right out about a, a month, four weeks, and uh, the seedlings are ready to go. Uh, <laughs> we've had kind of a rogue uh, cold front that came down. We've had five days of really unseasonable weather. I mean, we had two days that were in the 30s here in Florida in, in you know, late March. So I was pretty concerned about some of these. Um, that's why I always plant extra. So, you know, I wanted to plant five of these in containers. So, you know, I planted, I started 12 cups. All 12 have germinated and uh, grown. So what I'll do is I'll pick five of the very best of these and that's what I'll use in my garden. And then the remaining uh, seedlings that are in here, I'll give away to uh, folks that are in the area that would like to grow some of these for themselves in their garden. So um, come on up here and take a close look and uh, you can see how the seedlings look at four weeks. They, they're a little puny, you know, from what I'm normally seeing. These are determinant uh, tomatoes, so they should be a little bigger than this, but it's what it is, you know, you can't control the weather. So anyway, let's take a look at these up close and see what we got. There you go. As you can see, some of the uh, leaves are showing some uh, some stress, like that right there. Got some browning and yellowing. The stalks are good. The stems are all pretty healthy. They're looking good. 
and we got plenty of true leaves and they're actually starting to look a little bit on the leggy side so i want to get them out of these uh, little cups here's the other one you can see there's a little bit more worse uh worse looking plants on here but that'll actually recover you know in the days ahead if i just uh, get them on some warmer weather and get them out in the sun which i'm going to do i'm going to keep them out on the hardening table until i can give them away but these um these are the romas Martino Romas, determinant variety. So uh, let's pick out five, five real good looking ones out of here and we'll plant them in containers. So if you've never planted any uh, tomatoes in containers, today we're gonna do a little bit of uh, container planting. We'll do it together. And that way you can do this in your spring garden this year if, if you so desire. So let's go over and over uh, let's head on over yonder to the uh, grow table and get these things started. Well, here we are at the grow table. I got out um, five 15 gallon containers. That's what I'm going to be using for my Roma tomatoes, a determinant tomato. I want to do at least a 15 gallon for these plants because they will get pretty high. You know, they'll get three or four feet. And, and they'll bush out pretty big too. So I didn't want to crowd them up or put them in a pot that's too small because they just get root bound and then they don't produce the, the beautiful little fruit. So I give them plenty of root growth, plenty of room for expansion, and I spread them out so they're not compacted together. So there's plenty of airflow in between the plants. So, you know, it reduces some of the de to common tomato diseases that you get, which is usually caused by poor ventilation, overwatering. So anyway, I got the, uh, the pots. Um, if you want to get some of these pots, check out some of your local landscape companies. A lot of times they'll have a bunch of these pots. They'll go install a big landscape job and they have hundreds of these things at their shop and they're more than willing to get rid of them. And uh, I got these for free doing just that. They gave them to me for nothing and uh, it's, they're very good containers. If you can't find any anywhere, you can also go to places like Lowe's. They sell all kinds of uh, food grade containers and, and in fact they uh, sell 15 gallon as well. So anyway, we got the, um, the, the containers on the grow table. I mixed up my own um, container mix here. This is what I use in my uh, all my containers. We have a uh, video on how to make this at home if you want to make this for yourself. Uh, Nancy will put a link to that um, video on this video. So go check it out, how to make container mix at home. So let's go ahead and get started on these and get these things planted. Okay, the first thing I do is I fill the container up with soil until it's about five or six inches below the rim. And at this point, I start adding my amendments that I'm gonna be needing. The first thing I put in is pulverized dolomitic limestone. This is pure calcium and this really helps with um, reducing blossom end rot, which is very common on these determinant tomatoes. So I, I put that in there pretty good and I mix it down. I want to go down about four or five inches into the soil in the container with that limestone and be, give it plenty because it's gonna need it. See how I've actually changed the color of that. That's what I'm looking for. The next thing I'm gonna put in is Epsom salt. This is magnesium sulfate. You can get this at any garden center and this really um, helps with the, uh, with the plant as well. I put in about a, a half a cup of that and I mix that into the soil. Okay, next thing I use is bone meal. This is going to add the phosphorus that I'm looking for. This is a 0 10 0, gives plenty of, um, it stimulates root growth as well as blossoms, promotes blossoming. And you want plenty of blossoming when you're um, trying to grow tomatoes. I put in about a half a cup of that. Mix that in with the soil. Next thing I put in is the blood meal. This gives me a shot of organic nitrogen, which helps to promote lots of foliage 
you get lots of good foliage on the plant, then you're going to have a healthy overall plant because it's really sucking up that photosynthesis. Okay, there's my, my, my first initial amendment of the pot and notice it's only about six inches deep because when I plant the, uh, the seedling in there, I want this to be below the roots so it can grow down to it. Now that I've got it amended, what I want to do is um, flood this a little bit to pre-moisten this soil that will be underneath the plant. Okay, let's give that about 15 minutes to soak down. I want it to pre-moisten all that container soil I put in there because there's, you know, a lot of um, dry compressed peat in there and that's, that's some pretty dry stuff. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes and we'll take it to the next step. Our pots have uh, finished soaking and that uh, all that uh, water that I put in there has soaked on down. So at this point, I want to add some more container soil, nice and dry. That way I've got it up to about an inch below the rim. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to put a, poke a hole in there. And I like to go from the tip of my finger to the middle of my palm. And that's about how deep I'm going to need this. Next thing I do is I'm going to add about a tablespoon of uh, garden lime. A tablespoon of bone meal tablespoon of blood meal and another tablespoon of Epsom salt all right in the hole. Now I take one of my best looking ones, my best looking plant, seedling. There we go. And I only put one plant per um, container because these things will get pretty big if we're successful in growing these, if the weather will just cooperate with us. There we go. Next step is I take some of these bamboo canes and I trap this uh, seedling in a triangle pattern with the stem right in there, see? See how I did that? And what that does is it's going to help it give it some support in the wind. See how it's, it's contained in there? And it, it'll help it survive winds because in April we get a lot of wind down here. I don't know how it is in your area, but April gets a lot of wind and a lot of rain. So there we go, we got the uh, bamboo stakes in there. You can get these bamboo stakes really at any um, garden center. If you can't find them anywhere, take a look at um, our Amazon storefront link on the back of our channel. We've got some, uh, we got some of them on there if you can't find them nowhere. Next thing I do is I'm gonna put a tomato cage on here. And I put it right over the plant and you want to put it on now instead of coming back later and trying to fit it over the growing plant, which all that's going to do is end up tearing up your plant. Okay. The last step here for today is I lightly water in each of the seedlings 
And when I say lightly, I mean really lightly, because remember, we've already pre-moistened the bottom 75% of these uh, containers. So really all I need to do is just get those little seedling roots dampened, just like they were still in the uh, seed starting tray, about the same amount of water as you did then. And you'll increase it each, you know, as the weather gets hotter and the plant gets bigger, you increase a little bit of your water, enough to where you keep the soil moist, not saturated. If you're coming out and you're, you put the back of your hand down in that soil and it feels wet and damp, then don't water it. It's okay, because if you keep watering it, all you're gonna do is uh, create root rot problems and mildew and all other all kinds of diseases related to tomatoes that you know really come from too much watering so right there that's all i really need i got all my uh, i got all my cages up and they're ready to grow so we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll take a look at these as this weather starts to get warmer and warmer these plants should start to grow more and more so we'll be back soon Well, our Martino Romas have been uh, growing for 54 days. We started them from seed 54 days ago today. So they, they're just now getting some, uh, some good progress. We've had uh, two rogue cold fronts come through, which, you know, a, a tomato plant's not a big fan of cold weather. So um, we had two cold fronts come through. The first one even got down in the upper 30s. But, the second one was a little bit less severe. It was down into the low 50s. I cut one night was 49, but they survived it. They made it through, and uh, they're finally starting to make a comeback. And not only did they have to to struggle through those two cold fronts, we had like eight days in a row. I mean, a solid saturating rain. We got 11 inches of rain in eight days. So the whole garden had a, a rough time of it, but the, uh, the Romas are doing pretty good. Come on up and take a good look at them. I just uh, trimmed up the bottoms to keep them up off the, off the bottom of the containers because I don't want to um, get any of that early blight on there, which these things, you know, they do tend to do that. So get them trimmed up from the bottom and try not to wet the leaves whenever I water them. And if I uh, trim up the bottom like that, it makes it much easier to water without getting the leaves wet. So we got some warm temperatures coming in the days ahead. Um, I think we're heading into summer now. We're finally getting there. Um, been a real long cold spring, but uh, now that summer's gonna fix and set in, I think these romas will really start to show off what they can really do. So we'll be back in a few weeks and we'll take another look at them and uh, check on the progress of them. See you then. Well, good morning. Our Romas have been growing for nine weeks and uh, they're, they're starting to get some pretty good traction. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with them. But I wanted to show you today how I trim the bottom of these uh, plants. I get them up off of the bottom, several inches up high, and I strip all those bottom uh, limbs off. That way I can keep um, the water from splashing up on the leaves, which causes all kinds of um, mildew problems and disease with the, uh, with the plants. So at, when you get your plants up about this big, make sure that you trim up the bottoms. And when you water, you want to water by sticking your uh, watering wand right underneath as best you can so that you don't get the leaves wet. You just really just want to water the soil and water the roots. And that's a um, pretty easy thing to do as long as you uh, raise the bottom limbs up high enough to where that canopy is up well above the container so you can get your nozzle in there without splashing. So these things are doing really good. They're already starting to put on a lot of, I see a lot of buds already coming out. So they, they're gonna grow much bigger than this in the days ahead. So we'll be back to watch the progress and all the way up until we can um, come out here and pick a whole bunch of them, make some spaghetti sauce. So we'll see you back here shortly.
Well, good morning, friends. Our Martino Romo tomatoes have been growing for 72 days today, and they've made some great progress. They're bushing out very healthy. They're showing lots of blooms, and I've even got some little teeny weeny greenies on there, so it's getting there. Now, uh, last week, we had the first appearance of a, a hornworm. We sprayed, got the caterpillars completely under control. Uh, it rained real heavy yesterday, so Nancy came out this morning and did another application of the BT, just to be sure, because if um, normally if you spray the BT, it'll last a couple weeks, you know, really pretty good. But if you get a real heavy rain, like we did yesterday, it's a good idea to go ahead and reapply the BT to let it get back on there, because as you know, a hornworm is relentless. <laughs> So you really need to stay on top of it because they can decimate your tomatoes in just a matter of a couple of days and you don't even really realize it until it's too late. So keep an eye out for them. And if you've never used the BT on your tomato plants before, we have a video, Nancy can put a link on this video of, uh, of the video. It's called How to Get Rid of a Tomato Hornworm Using the Thuricide BT. Check it out. It'll show you step by step how to do it. There's really nothing to it and it'll help you to protect your beautiful tomatoes from the evil uh, tomato hornworm. So we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll continue to watch the progress of these beautiful romas until we can make us some spaghetti sauce with it. We'll see you soon. Well, good morning, friends. Well, our, our uh, Roma tomatoes are finally starting to come in. Um, remember these are determinant variety tomatoes so once they come in they, they usually come in kind of all at one time and you'll also see your plants really start to decline and you know give up. Uh, we've also got um, some, some blight getting started in these tomatoes so what we're going to do today is we're going to start picking them. There's some of them in here that are turning red and what Nancy and I normally do on Romas is we go ahead and just take everything at one time, red, green, all of it, get it all off. And um, we take the green greenies and we leave them in the pantry up on the table, you know, and you know, a few more days they'll be red anyway. And mm -hmm. I've never been able to tell the difference in the taste of red on the counter or red on the vine on these Romas. So anyway, it's, um, it's best for us to go ahead and get them off before something happens like worms or insects or something like that. So go ahead and get them while we can and, uh, and we'll get these started. So you about ready to peel off some of these uh, romas? Oh yeah, beautiful. And see that they're starting to change colors. Some of them are still green. Some of them are actually full blown red. Yeah, there's some beautiful ones in here. Yeah, like, you know, see they're already fully red. Mm -hmm. They're fully red. And here's some that's just starting to turn, barely. So what we do is we go ahead and get everything we can get. So let's get started. Well, there we go. We got aromas off the uh, off of the uh, the bushes out there, and uh, ideally, you know, these would all come in at the same time, being that they're determinate, like we were talking about earlier. But, however, that <laughs> in a perfect world, that don't always happen. So, what me and Nancy did is we just picked um, uh, as many as we could get that looked like they were you know, the right size, like this is the right size, green, and we'll bring it in here and let it ripen on the rack. And of course, all the red ones, and it, they don't even have to be all the way red, just starting to turn pink is good enough. And you bring them in and let them finish out in here. We only got about half of what was out there because the rest of them weren't quite big enough yet. So hopefully they will continue to grow and um, make 
Roma tomatoes. So we'll get these up here on the rack and see how they do. And Miss Nancy will come out here in the days ahead. And I'm sure you're going to make some spaghetti sauce out of this, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll be, she's, she's working on a lot of videos for y'all this year. So I've been real proud of her on the, uh, I've been real proud of her on her cooking videos because they're really getting pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm so, enjoying it. Having fun doing it. So anyway, there's what we got today. There'll be some more coming in the days ahead and um, Miss Nancy will come out and, uh, and do some cooking videos with you. So we always want to be thankful for the Lord for everything we, he gives us, especially spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. So until me and Nancy see you next time, always remember, by his hands, we are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.